Hi everyone, welcome to week four. So you've made it through three weeks of semester. Good job so far. Um, we're on to week four talking about summarizing data. So what we'll be talking about today is going to be pulling on the things we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. In particular, we'll be recapping a little bit about different kinds of variables because that's going to become relevant when we think about how best to summarize different kinds of variables. Um, and I'll also be talking a little bit about Stata and how to produce these summary pieces of information in Stata itself. So a warning up front, there's parts of this lecture which are a little bit mathsy, and I apologise for that, but unfortunately it's unavoidable. Um, it won't be too bad, hopefully, and so hopefully you'll get to see that even though there are some maths formulas on the slides, please don't freak out about it, that I'll explain the logic behind them and why it's important to think about these things in terms of summarising data. So you've been warned. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is how to, pre how to present data. So the important ways that we need to think about um, how best to communicate and summarise data and why summaries are important. I'll be making a distinction between numeric and graphical kinds of summaries. We'll then be thinking about different ways for summarising data dependent on the kind of variable that we're thinking about. So last week or two weeks ago, um, we talked about the distinction between categorical and numeric data, qualitative and quantitative variables. So there's different kinds of summaries for those different sorts of variables. So we'll start off by thinking about categorical data and then talking about numeric data. And there's different sorts of considerations to make in terms of this, the shape or the pattern of the distribution, depending on whether it's a categorical variable or a numeric variable. So we'll be talking a bit about that. I'll also talk a bit about the normal distribution. Um, that being a particular shape or a particular pattern that numeric um, quantitative data sort of can take often. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about why that's important and then finish off with, I think, just one more graph at the end there. Okay, so the first thing we want to think about is presenting data. So assuming that you've gone through the process of creating a research study and running that research study and collecting the data, the next thing that you need to think about as a researcher or as a clinician who's working with researchers is what you want to do in terms of communicating that data to your fellow researchers, to um, the world, to people who might be interested in the data. So you need to think about how to present it or how to most effectively communicate it to people. Generally speaking, there's two different ways of presenting data. You can list the data, and that essentially means not summarising it in any way, but just presenting the, the full extent of all the information that's been collected. Or you can think about some way of summarising or aggregating or kind of pulling together um, in a slightly more efficient way the data. So that's a summary of the data. Listing can be particularly useful when you don't have a lot of data. So if you've only collected a small number of observations worth of data, that can be very a very useful thing to do. But if you have a lot of data, and I'll show you on the next slide what I mean by that, it's actually not a particularly efficient way of communicating information to people. So this is an example of, say, six observations. Um, this is an example that's been taken from Stata. It's a table that's been summarised in Stata. Um, and the specific command that I used to get this information once the data set was in Stata was, this called, what, was what's called the list command. So the list command does what it says, it lists the data, um, and if you don't specify a variable name after it, it just lists all of the variables. So this is a summary piece of information of a data set that has four variables and six observations. And you can see looking at that table there, it's not a bad looking table. So if you wanted to get a sense of what the kinds of responses were people gave to say the survey that they completed, um, you could get a decent sense of that just by looking at this. You can see that we've got a couple of females, a couple of males, um, one person who's identified as other gender. We've got a range of PSYC 105 scores and a range of PSYC 104 scores. So looking at this table, this listed data, it's not a bad way of presenting the data. However, that was good for six observations, for six records in the data set. But when we get to even 30 observations, 30 records, you can see on the right hand side, it's not particularly useful. There's no way of looking at that and getting a sense of say, how many males there are compared to females, getting a sense of what the range of 105 scores or what the range of 104 scores are. It's too much information that we're trying to process. We're kind of overwhelmed with information here. So listing data can be useful when you have a small number of observations, but when you have a larger number of observations, and 30 isn't even that many, you can see that it's actually not particularly useful. 
So what that means is that if we want to think about communicating data, if we want to think about summarising information that we've collected to people, we need to think about how best to summarise that. What's the most appropriate summary that we can give? And there's a distinction in terms of summarising information depending on how many variables there are that are part of that summary at any one time. So a univariate summary, a univariate summary of data is looking at just one variable at a time. Univariate, one variable. So a univariate summary would say be a summary of just gender or a summary of just 105 scores or a summary of just age. It's looking at one variable at a time. And that can be useful as a first step. But something you might also want to do is a bivariate summary. And a bivariate summary is a summary of two variables. Bivariate, two variables. So if I wanted to get a sense of, say, average age according to gender, what's the average age for males? What's the average age for females? What's the 105 score for males? What's the 105 score for females? That would be a bivariate summary. So it's a summary of two variables together. And Another distinction that we can make in terms of summary displays is the distinction between a, between a numeric summary and a graphical summary. A numeric summary is just a summary using numbers, so using a number to represent the data. A graphical summary is using a summary in the form of a graph or a chart, so a visual display, um, a visual de depiction of the data itself. What we'll be talking about today are both numeric and graphical summaries, but we'll be talking pretty much just just about univariate summaries. We won't get into the bivariate summaries yet, but we'll start that in a couple weeks' time. So to think about what kind of summary, there's lots of different kinds of numeric summaries, there's lots of different kinds of graphical summaries. When you want to think about what kind of summary is most, ap most appropriate, then you need to think about the measurement type of the variable. And we spent a fair bit of time two weeks ago talking about uh, measurement type. When I say we, I mean I spent a fair bit of time talking to you two weeks ago about measurement type. We need to think about that distinction between qualitative and quantitative variables, categorical variables versus numeric variables, because the, depending on what kind of variable it is, that will dictate what the appropriate display is. How you summarise a categorical variable like gender is quite different to how you want to summarise a numeric variable like age. Okay, so categorical data, let's start off with that because it's a little bit simpler to begin with. Remember that that's when you've got distinct categories or groups or types of things. So you can have, you can have a categorical variable like gender, like department, like colour, like type of car, suburb of Sydney, anything like that that doesn't have a numeric property, but it's something that's just a descriptive term. It's a category or a type or a group of thing. Those kinds of summaries tend to be frequency tables in terms of the numeric summaries of categorical variables. And I'll show you what a frequency table is in a second. And in terms of graphical summaries, we use bar charts or pie charts. Just to note at this stage, there are heaps and heaps of different kinds of summaries for both categorical and numeric variables. So I am definitely not giving you all the possible summaries. These are just the most common ones that we use, particularly in psychology. Um, and in my opinion, the most useful or the most helpful kinds of summaries. When we're thinking about numeric data, so these are your quantitative variables, we're thinking about a score, a particular numeric score on some kind of scale. So remember that could be age, that could be um, 105 SNG, that could be the distance that you drive to uni each day, anything that's that numeric property of a variable. So in terms of the appropriate summaries for those kinds of variables, the numeric type of summary for numeric data um, tend to be numeric summary statistics, so things like means, medians and modes, and I'm going to define those um, as part of this lecture, things like standard deviation. These are using numbers to summarise either the average distribution, the kind of the average score in the distribution, or to summarise how much variation or how much variance there is around that middle. And again, I'm going to go into more detail about that in a second. In terms of the graphical summaries for numeric data, then again, there's heaps of them. The most common, particularly in psychology, is something called a histogram. And a histogram looks very similar to a bar chart, which was for the categorical data, but it is importantly different. And again, I'll demonstrate that for you in a second. For both categorical and numeric variables, there's three different things that we can think about, three different qualities of the distribution that we can think about. But these things we tend to think about more formally for numeric type variables, for numeric data. The first thing to think about is typicality. 
So what's the most common score? What's the most common category? In terms of if we're thinking about a categorical variable like gender, what's the most common? If we're looking at some undergraduate psychology students, they're about 70, 80% female and about you know 20, 30% male. So typicality is what's the most common score? What's the most common value? Variability is how much variance or fluctuation or deviance there is in scores. So how much variety is there in scores or do, do there not tend to be a lot of variety? Does everybody tend to have the same kind of score? So if we were measuring, um, if we were measuring say, after school jobs that people would have, is it that you know 75% of our sample work in fast food chains and then 25% work somewhere else? Or is it that there's quite a variety of different places that people work, different jobs that people work? The third thing we can think about is shape. And this is definitely something that's specific for just numeric data. This is looking at what shape the distribution or the spread of scores takes. And specifically, we're going to be talking a lot about normal shaped distributions, which are also called bell curve distributions. Um, the reason that we're going to be talking so much of that, I'll go into a bit later, but they're particularly important for the kinds of statistics that we're going to be talking about.